Hey everyone, Fuzzy here. As you guys know, I've beaten Sifu many times at age 20 with no deaths. To do that, I always go with a set build path that once I reach the final boss ends up looking like what you're seeing here. This is how my build looks after starting a fresh run from a brand new game that has no permanent unlocks to begin with. The shrine related upgrades that you see on the left are min-maxed based on upgrading the right perk at the right time along the way. The list on the right shows you how to get what you see on the left as you play through each level. Use it to know what to upgrade at each shrine. You'll notice focus bar level 1 is upgraded at the start of the squats and focus bar level 2 is upgraded at the start of the club. If you think you shouldn't bother upgrading focus because the final boss is immune to it, then think again. To beat the final boss you need maximum structure reserve, maximum structure regain and maximum parry impact. As you can see, you also get those with this build path. The final boss is covered and investing in focus will not hurt you in any way with the final boss. Nor will it be a waste because focus will help you more than any other perk with all the previous bosses and especially with mini bosses. In fact, once you learn the mechanics of the bosses, it's the mini bosses that are more likely to spoil your no death run, but not if you have two bars of focus. Two bars of focus gives you access to two eye pokes and mini bosses are especially vulnerable to an eye poke followed by a charged blade strike. It one shots them basically. You can get an entire focus back from one charged blade strike as well, so that's essentially three focus bars for the price of two. Watch this to see what I mean. Here's another clip showing how easy eye pokes and charged attacks make what otherwise are difficult mini boss duos easy. I'll talk about skills in a moment, but for now there's a good reason why you should make sure you have focus bar level 2 unlocked after using the first shrine in the club. Yes, it's helpful to get two eye pokes early in the game, but the other reason is the arguably hardest mini boss fight in the game takes place in a secret room in the club called the Aquarium. There are no one-shotting blades to help you beat the two mini bosses you have to fight there, and they're nightmarishly difficult. But if you come to the club prepared with two focus levels unlocked after you beat the first mini boss on the dance floor, you'll find these two a lot easier to deal with. The only consideration you need to bear in mind to make this build path work for you is you must get a high score in your playthrough of the squats in order to unlock parry impact levels 1 and 2 before you finish playing the squats. For that, don't kill any enemies without having a times 5 multiplier going on every enemy you kill. That means taunting the first enemy right from the start to times 5, and it means taunting enemies every time you get hit and your multiplier goes down to make sure it goes back up to times 5 again. Fortunately, you only have to worry about maxing your score in the first level in the squats, and fortunately, that's the easiest level. After that, play normally without worrying, and your score and XP will always be enough to get the other perks as you go. As far as skills go, if you're starting the game fresh from scratch, and you might be because you can't override your lower stage shrine upgrades without doing that, at least until they patch that problem, I recommend unlocking Environmental Mastery, Charged Back Fist, and Raining Strikes as your first three skills. Environmental Mastery can be used right from the moment you unlock it against the first mini boss. In fact, there are very few places it isn't useful apart from boss fights. You can even use it to fully cheese late game mini boss fights. can't one-shot bosses, but Charged Back Fist is the skill that lets you use blade weapons to one-shot any enemy including the toughest mini-bosses. Raining Strikes is a skill that works so well against the final boss that it's worth getting just for that. It's also not too shabby against other enemies either. As you can see, I personally concentrate on permanently unlocking those three first before I move on to any other skills. You'll earn enough XP to permanently unlock all three in a single deathless run. In the last level, you'll have a little bit of XP that you can use to unlock whatever you want for your fourth skill, but that won't matter. Just don't spread your XP around or you'll lose all your non-permanently unlocked skills if you complete the game or replay a previous level. 
I've mentioned focus already. Parry impact, it's a priority as it means the more you block with good timing, the greater your damage against enemy structure will be. That's an essential perk that you absolutely must upgrade to level 3. Weapon proficiency also helps you do more damage against enemy structure with weapons, it's also essential. Structure reserve and structure regain are extremely important too as they allow you to block more damage and therefore survive longer. You can also see weapon durability there, that's the last upgrade on the path and not really essential at all but it's a nice to have once you've maxed out all the other perks listed. So yeah, those are the best shrine upgrades and skills to take from a fresh start of the game if you want the best chance at going 20 and 0. And that's based on me testing a ton of different upgrade paths and skill combinations over many, many runs. Anyway, thanks for watching, and if you have any other questions, post away in the comments and I'll do my best to help you out. Bye for now.